peace, world peace and environmental conservation. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. In the Republican reaction to Obama's State of the Union address, uh, Congresswoman Kath Kathy McMorris Rogers of Washington said securing our borders is a key part of immigration reform. Yes, it's time to honor our history of legal immigration. We're working on a step by step solution to immigration reform by first securing our borders and making sure America will always attract the best, brightest, and hardest working from around the world. And with too many Americans living paycheck to paycheck, we have solutions to help you take home more of your pay through lower taxes, cheaper energy costs, and affordable health care. Uh, Lorella Praeli, your response uh, to what she said, and also if you could say a little bit more about what you think is preventing President uh, Obama from taking further action on immigration. Sure. I mean, we're waiting for, to, you know, to the Republican Party and to members of the Republican uh, conference, we say, show us your bills, right? So they're about to go into—they are now in their three-day retreat in Maryland, and they're going to talk about and shop around their Republican principles. And I think it's great that they're making progress, but I really do think that it's not enough. We've been fighting for this—we've been having a conversation about immigration for over a decade in this country. Uh, the Senate was able to produce a bill by last June, 2013. And since then, House Republicans have been really trying to figure out how to move this issue forward, how to deal with it in their conference. Um, so, you know, they can continue to say it's a step-by-step -step approach. They can continue to use the talking points of we need to secure our borders first. The real question today is show us your plan, show us your bills, so that we can begin to actually have a conversation about what the ultimate solution is going to be. Lorella, uh, and I think President Obama talked about uh, executive action um, on, for example, increasing the minimum wage for uh, workers who work for federal contractors. What about on the issue of immigration? He continually says his hands are tied. What could he do as president? There's a lot more he can do. He can start by in, in enforcing and implementing his own priority policies. Right. So he is saying that I'm only removing serious criminals from the United States. And the, and the truth is that that is actually factually inaccurate. The president is going after families. The president's policies are separating families. We lost um, one of we, we lost the father um, of two U.S. citizen kids last month. Um, he was held in detention for over a year. His name is Ardani. Um, all because of a, a minor traffic violation. He missed the uh, birth of his second child and was then deported. Um, he doesn't meet any priority. The administration's policies result made, made, him more, made him deportable, and that's what ended up happening. And so we think that there's more that the president can do to stop the pain in the community and to stop the separation. He can use his pen, just like he did on DACA. Right? He came out with this policy and said, dreamers are not a priority for my, my administration. We are going to make sure that they, they stay here, that they have an opportunity to work here until Congress takes action. Now, Congress has been having a debate on immigration for a long time, and we are, as United We Dream, committed to seeing a legislative permanent fix to this issue. But we cannot kid ourselves. Since this debate started after the 2012 elections, over 400,000 people have been deported. So we're coming to the president and saying, you also ought to use your pen to stop the pain in the community. You've got to use the pen to make sure that you're not deporting people who ought to be in the United States with their families. And there's more that you can do today and continue to fight for immigration reform. And you talked about DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, uh, Lorella. You yourself um, uh, gained legal status through this after fighting for this, fasting for this, marching for this, among many other young immigrants. Uh, talk about your own personal experience and last night being there. I mean, what's interesting about uh, young immigrant activists like you is you were very much on the outside, risking everything, risking deportation of yourself and your families, and now you're being invited to the State of the Union address. I explain the feeling. You have access to at least speak to these people, whether or not they're passing the legislation you're pushing for. What was it like to be inside? It, it was really—it um, was kind of unreal, to be honest. Uh, I think that 
I, I think about my own journey and I think about the journey of, of all of the dreamers who we work with on a regular basis. And I think about the sacrifices that our parents have made for that, for yesterday to be possible. Tell us your own uh, story quickly, Lorella. So, so I came here when I was um, 11 years old. I had had a car accident and um, my right leg was amputated. I had treatment in Shriners Hospital in the United States. Um, and I was undocumented for almost 13 years. And I was actually able to adjust my status and get my green card a year and a half ago. Um, but it, it was, I spent many years, I spent many years being afraid of living my life, of being who I am, um, and feeling very ashamed of being undocumented. And it was because I found United We Dream and the immigrant youth movement um, that I felt empowered and I came out of the shadows and I began to talk about what it meant, what it was like to be undocumented, uh, and then worked to pass a tuition equity bill in Connecticut and then came to advocate for the DREAM Act here. Um, so it's been uh, a real evolution for many dreamers. Um, we have gone from being undocumented and afraid uh, to being undocumented and unafraid and demanding what we think is right, working for a more just society and really um, honoring the sacrifices that our parents have made, Amy, because I would not be here today speaking with you, speaking with America and sharing my story uh, had it not been for all of the sacrifices that my mom made for this to be possible. She pushed me when I wanted to give up. She left her own country, her own comfort zone, um, and every day risks deportation for my dreams to be true. So that is what this fight is about. That's what this conversation in 2014 ought to be about. Um, we know that there are proposals to secure the border. We know that there are, there's a conversation happening about uh, creating a, a pathway to legalization and an opportunity for citizenship. But we got to remember who we're talking about. We're not talking about criminals. We're talking about people like Chela Praeli, um, who raised me in America. Mm.